Well, 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 where did we leave off with Project Johnson? Oh, yes! Everything was almost assembled except for all of the important parts, like the electronics and the hydraulic hoses. Well, have a good look here, my friends. All of these hoses have been hooked up to their brass lines. Around we go, down into the accessory lines, and then you have two that go on either side of this uh, of the bucket ram. Look at that. That curls around to the inside hydraulic lines, which go all the way down the boom and gets buried below. What is that? Just a lid on top? Hold on. Let me back up. I know, the last video I did, I asked people, did you want me to show you electronic setup or not? I got about a 50-50 response. People said they've seen me do it before, please just move forward, and people that said they wanted to see every single detail possible. Well, I kind of figured out to do a mixture of both worlds here. I kind, of, I kind of thought that I could do a summary for you guys so you could have a look. Let me remove the top lid, which normally would get screwed down. Let's slide this big fellow over here. All of the electronics are done. And before you start berating me about how messy it is in there, there is a lot going on in here. And I have tried to separate it so it'll make it easier for you to see. Now, on either side, let me open up these side doors. That's right. Look at this. You can have a, a good look inside. There is the receiver on the inside right here. Those are my two antenna. Look at this. I Velcroed it to the inside using a 10 channel receiver. Now you are going to want to check this out because this is the normal radio I use for all of my heavy duty equipment. This allows me to do multiple mixes on one single radio and this radio is a Flysky. It is super inexpensive. I'll leave a link uh, to Amazon in the video description box below if you guys want to check this out with the 10 uh, with the 10 channel receiver. Why would I need 10? Well, I don't really need 10. I only really need it about seven channels are used. I'm kind of pulling one out there and there we go. And what you have to keep in, in mind and what I'm going to cover here with you guys today is so there are four ESCs, the brushless uh, ESC, which is the quick run 10 BL 120 amp. This is running the uh, hydraulic pump motor that's under this cover. We covered that in the last episode uh, as well as this is the brushed mo uh, ESC for the motor that turns the top carousel on top of the slew ring and then below uh, we covered that there was two ESC's for a total of four that are brushless as well that actually run the drive cogs on either side. So what you have to remember is that all of these ESC's are all being plugged into a battery. How the heck would you plug all those into the battery? Well look at these two little beauties right here. These are actually wire connectors. They're actually little snaps and you can put it all the way up like that, you push the wire all the way in, and then you snap it shut and it keeps them closed. Well, what you do is you take all the negatives, right, from all those ESCs, each, each one, one, two, three, four, with a negative lead out the back. Then for all the positives, one, two, three, four, and then another lead off to the side. That one is gonna go straight to your battery. Now what you see here is a little go-between that I made, which gives me a little extra power accessory, which powers my additional fans. There's one on the side here. Let me see, there you go, it's for the cooler. This is the hydraulic oil cooler. Yes, it's a scale radiator, you got it. Uh, there's a fan there. There is a fan on this side to help uh, get those ESCs cooled off when it's necessary. And then, there is a fan on top of this one. <laughs> And there's like a whole bunch of howling fans that are in here. But that's a good thing because you want lots of cooling when you have something like this. So I had to hook up each ESC, uh, but I did not want to overvolt the, the receiver, right? Because some receivers will be able to take an overvoltage, some won't. And remember this, if you guys are building along with me, I'm going to give you an example right now. Look at this top track ESC. There's no red wire. Look at the one right underneath that. There's no red wire. These are the two track ESCs right here. The reason why I'm even saying that twice is so you guys know, I hooked it up on channel 9 and channel 10 as accessories. I set them up on the side dials. So there's track 1 and there's track 2. If I push forward, I go forward on that one track. If I push backward, I go backward on that one track. This one here is the whole um, ESC for the pump. So I've plugged that into channel 5. 
that's going to be very important for the mixing lesson I'm about to give because I'm sure everyone is checked out, everyone is bored, <laughs> and that's why I don't do electronics videos very often. Um, but hopefully that the next bit of information is going to be very helpful. That pump ESC right here has the, the red lead in. I am using that ESC to actually power the receiver and it will run everything including those servos that I have on the bottom. I'm running the servos for this for the boom rams uh, for channel 2, channel 3 and channel 4. That will be important for mixing information as well as channel 5 for that pump. Now what am I doing all over? So, <laughs> so for the actual uh, carousel, the turret on top or the part that, that rotates I should say uh, for those that don't know this is also the ESC which is on top. Notice that the red wire has been bent back as well. All I did was unhook it from the receiver, uh, the, the, the receiver clip, and then kind of tape it back on itself. So only one red wire from this ESC is powering all of this and then it's just the other ESCs are getting a signal and their own power from being directly connected to the battery, okay? Because those, those ESCs are connected one wire per, per hookup here, right? Red and black, red and black, red and black, red and black, and then out to the end, red and black, boom, into the battery, everything's powered up. Now, one thing that, oh, oh, I know, if you're still watching, please leave some noise in the comment section right now. I always feel like these are super unhelpful to most people, but if you're interested in what I'm talking about, please at least hit the like button right now. Uh, so what I wanna say to you about the uh, ESC, there are setup in the setup that you have to do. So you have to make sure you calibrate this ESC. Number one thing to do, before you plug in any of the other ESCs, you plug in this one into channel five, you turn on the receiver, you make sure that your radio is uh, on first, and then you do a calibration on this. Just look online for the, the Hobbywing BL120 uh, quick run uh, um, ESC, and you'll find the setup instructions for that. It's really simple. You just use the on and off switch. To, it has a little programmable button on it. Where's the switch? I've got it tucked away, of course. Uh, you can use the setup button. It's super simple. Just follow the online guide. Now, the two track ESCs, you can't see. They're in behind here, but I did show them in the first video. What you want to do with those is if you can't figure out the tracks, you actually have to calibrate those as well. What you do is you you hold the set button in and you turn it on and you keep holding that set button in and you'll notice that the, the orange light goes to a slightly brown light. At that point, what you want to do is you want to uh, uh, take your track and push the, like, push the dial all the way to the top and then it should beep, beep, and then it goes to the center and then you leave it and it goes beep, beep, and then you go to the rear and hold it, it goes beep, beep, and then you let it go and you turn off each track. So that's something that's helpful for you guys to know. Uh, and then this top ESC, the one for the brush turret, on the side, if you actually look closely, right down, oh, right in there, uh, you can't see it, but there is actually a switch right there too. There's one on top and one on bottom. The one on bottom is to indicate if you're using battery or nickel metal hydride, and then the one on top is either forward, uh, just forward only, or forward and reverse, and you want forward and reverse, so you can go both sides, turret side to turret side. Now, <sighs> That's a lot of information, guys. Thank you for sticking with me through that. I know a lot of new people and experienced people really don't know a lot about hooking things like this up. And look at this. These, these actually came, here I'll show you. These actually came with the kit, right? There it is. And that's, that these are, this is just how you hook up the wires. So you could hook up one, two, three, four, and then have the lead that comes out to the battery, right? Positive and negative. Okay, second, uh, these are not easy to work with, of course. Your fingers are gonna be sore, you're gonna have to turn a lot, heat up the end, put it onto the post, and then make sure your collars are on there before you do that, or else you're gonna have a big pain in the butt later. Make sure as well, this is only one servo. This is uh, in and out, basically. This actually controls the two front booms. So when you come out of here, pay special attention because this channel or this line is these two lines. These split off to both rams on the front. It goes to this one and this one right here. If you can see that, yeah, you can. This one and this one just to be clear. And then the second channel or the second, like the, the closed one goes to here and to here, the second position I should say. 
So in and out for these two, they split off and control two, and then you have a single RAM up here. You guys unfortunately saw me uh, or heard of me breaking my RAM right here. Yes, it's a hideously ugly, uh, I got a blind person to do this for me. It was the only help I could find, uh, but they did solder the connection the way it was broken. I'll tell you, this was incredibly difficult to solder, um, but I did get it. Yes, it's ugly, and yes, I don't have any paint on there, but I will fix that and make it a little tidier. I also put a bend in this loop and that was how I was able like when I redid this I actually was able to move it up a little bit you can see that and I put this bend and a little zip tie here which kind of helps it and then I kind of took these leads and I bent them up a little bit as well because they are just brass tubing and if you're very careful you can get a few millimeters of bend on that so yes it's not leaking I did have a son of a <laughs> trying time trying to get this done Finally, after many tries, I did get it done, and yes, I did ruin my paint, but I will be able to repair it. But the rest of it looks fantastic. This bucket, guys, if you guys watched the last episode, you saw it can actually hold a king can, or really two beers and a bucket of ice is what can go in here. My hand can fit in there easily. A Sharpie can fit in there. How about a whole tube of grease? Cozies can go in there. Look at tube and grease and cozy side by side. <laughs> There is a lot of uh, volume to this bucket, so that's very cool. Painted it. You guys can say it's in uh, McDonald's uh, colors if you want. It's actually in this color of Iron Man for my, for my son because he's like one of his favorite guys. Look at, look at this guy hanging on. There you go. So I'm going to put him in there. I think we should fire this up and give you a little breakdown of mixing, or maybe I'll just do that quickly right now for you. Why not? Okay, so this radio, what do I mean by mixing? Well, what I mean is I don't want my pump to be on all the time. That'll just suck the battery juice out of this machine. And it's always causing, like, you'd have to have a, a, a flow-through uh, valve as well. One of your servos has to be hooked up and mixed so when it's, when it's on all the time, it, it, when it's not being used, it's still circulating. I don't like to do that. I hook mine up a little differently. Yes, this is a gargantuan motor. It is like the size of my hand. Normally, motors like this don't have enough speed to get up to speed to help the pump in the mix soon enough. What am I talking about? Well, when I move the boom stick and I want this whole top boom to lift, that's when I want the pump to turn on. Not running all the time making tons of noise because it's noisy enough with the fans. And yes, I could put a uh, sound kit in here if I could find one that I liked that I could use. Uh, and so what I want is when I go to move the boom stick forward, I want this uh, to, to only turn on the pump as well. So I want you to think about this, taking this fella out of the, the way right now, just so there's no silly mistakes here, uh, that when you're asking for this ram to move, it asks the pump to move at the same time. When you're asking this ram to move, you ask the pump to move at the same time. If you're getting both of them to move at the same time, the, the pump is moving. Same with the front ones. What am I talking about? Mixing. Guys, please, if you didn't comment before, make an effort. You're watching on TV right now. Open up your phone and leave me some noise that this is helpful for you. Uh, so, okay. So what I did was I went into auxiliary channels and I made, remember I said my pump was channel five? I made that into switch SWB, which is my three position switch. You have to hook it up to a three position switch to do the uh, calibration on that ESC because it's going to be uh, top, neutral, and backwards. You just have to calibrate it that way. Then when you start up your radio, you turn it on. It says all switches into the up position that it is. Then I automatically switch it to the middle position knowing that I'm about to start this up. I, don't, I want that in a neutral position at all times, okay? So then what I'm going to do, now that I know that it's there, and I already know uh, which my other channels are on as well, because I have two, three, and four, which are controlling the boomstick and the, shell, the bucket and the arm. So I'm going to go to mix. This updated version has four different mixes you can do. I only want to do three mixes right now, because remember, boom, boomstick, and the... Uh, and the bucket. So my boom is on channel two. I'm asking that to be the master channel. The second, the slave channel, is always gonna be the pump channel, okay? So this is channel five, automatic. We went over why, there's the first one, there's the second one. Your negative is gonna to go to position negative 100. You can actually move up and down and just go to individual, individual, it's a touch screen, individual numbers. I'm not looking at it through the camera lens. So that's at negative 100. And then on your uh, positive position, I actually moved it to positive 100. 
And then that's mix number one. That means when I go to move the boom, it's going to activate the boom input as well as the pump. So then if I wanted to go to a different one, I would go to uh, mix number two. All right, enter. That went to mix four, which I don't have activated. It's just my fat fingers today on a dirty screen. <laughs> Kaboom! Okay, so there it is, channel three, mixing with channel five. So channel three, the master input is going to be channel three. The follow-up uh, input is going to be channel uh, five, and you're going to have the negative and the positive. And same with channel, uh, or same with mix number three. All of this is done. So channel four, the follow-up is channel five, and then negative and a negative. And this is going to be your result, okay? This 2200 is definitely inadequate for uh, this size. It will die within like 10 minutes of use. You definitely want to have like a big uh, 5,000 milliamp hour at least. Uh, if you can get any larger than that, do it. Uh, this is the battery tray right here. And of course, I put on the beautiful back plate. Look at that. Isn't that nice, eh? Hand painted guys. So put that in there. I'll just plug this in after I put the receiver back on the Velcro. Why did I stick it to Velcro on the back wall? Because this is a hydraulic machine and chances are one day you're gonna have hydraulic oil on the floor of this machine. And I try to keep everything off the floor just in case there is any fluid because it is a huge pain in the butt. Speaking of hydraulic fluid, there it is. This is what I use. Some people say you can use some uh, vegetable oil. I don't uh, suggest that. I actually use the actual hydraulic oil because I don't want any wear in my hydraulic block. Also, I use a small injector needle like this. You can find them out. Uh, behind convenience stores, back alleyways, around garbages, maybe some uh, medical pickup places. Uh, try to make sure yours is clean though, and uh, yeah, that's try never to poke yourself with it. And if anyone ever pulls you over and asks you if they have anything sharp on you, just tell them, yes, you have this, and it's for your hydraulic equipment at home. They'll totally believe you. That's why I have five liters of this, or I could say 10 quarts. Yeah, uh, I, <laughs> I need it. <laughs> they look at me funny, I, I know. So here we go. Let's plug this baby in and see what we can do. Contact. Beautiful. Okay, so it's whizzing away. You can unplug that. It's just like there's a little plug right here to unplug the fan if you want. Uh, this one I've got a, on a thermostat. It doesn't start up until it's absolutely needed. And uh, the other one on the other side for the oil cooler goes all the time. Now. It's humming away. I'm gonna unplug this one, just so you can hear me. Get everything around. Now this is the hydraulic tank, right? Now when you're actually filling the hydraulic tank, let me focus on that. This is the breather hole. This is actually where you fill it up. While you're actually doing this, make sure that you fill the tank up all the way to the top <laughs> while you're actually adding fluid. But, you don't want to have everything full because this oil is going to expand with heat and you're only going to want, like after everything is full in here already, you're only going to want about a third to a half a tank of oil in there because you will have this shooting up and if you're not careful, your mouth is open, you're going to get some in your mouth, you might squirt someone in the eye. I'm not kidding here, man. I'm talking distance when this stuff squirts back out. And uh, there's just no way to get away from double entendres in this hobby, I'll tell you what. So everything is fired up right now. I actually, I'll leave that uh, breather hole out. There is no cap for it that I can see. But this little adding spot, I'm just gonna thread that on one thread. Just so I don't lose it. And then that way it can still breathe around both of the holes. <laughs> there we are, close that down. Now, so we all saw the mixing already. Everything is basically ready to go. Okay, we'll get the operator back in there. Beauty. Close the door. Okay, so here are the two sticks. Now when I pull uh, backwards, it's gonna pull up. So, you know, you can hear that just starting at that point. It's alive! It's finally alive! Look at that beauty. 
So all the way around, it can spin 360. There's no cables on the inside for you to have to worry about. Um, those cables, it, it actually works on a ring system where it makes a connection all the way around a, a metal ring. And so you don't have to worry. It's 360 degree slew there. It's a noisy as hex uh, pump, but again, it's huge. There, look at that. Now, give you a bit of a different angle. Here, let's move you over here. Brushless track motors. Look at those beauties. It's rumbling the table. What a monster. Yeah, I plugged in the ESC over there, that fan humming away. You can feel the air coming through on this radiator. Really cool how they did that. You can see, oh, I did have a little bit of a leak there. It likes to have lots of breathing room, especially while it's warm. Let me wipe this up. I don't like it when it's slippery everywhere. Too much lube! I'll just put a shop towel in here. What I'll do normally is because while this fluid is expanding and has air in there, it's going to want to burble up through that area. Plus the return hose is right underneath it, so it makes it want to bubble up. That's fine. I'm going to look for a two-way valve or something for that one. So at least the air can escape, but hopefully no fluid. I, I think that'll be impossible, but I can look. Let me see. Look at that, fellas. That's amazing! It is finally alive! Well, I know, hopefully, if you guys have any comments or questions, I didn't cover it today, you can leave it in the uh, comments section down below. And uh, I do read my uh, comments of older videos throughout the years. So I can probably catch it from time to time. There we go. What do you think, guys? What do you, what do you think of the color? I know. The soldering job isn't like the hottest in the world. I didn't have the proper flux, but excuses are like ass everyone has one. Wow. Okay, I know you want to see a size comparison. I'll put them side by side. And ba boom there they are side by side look at that it looks like they're almost like oh like a miniature version clearly with the Komatsu this is the 360 version uh, I actually did it as a Kabelko or Kabelko or whatever you want to call it wherever you're from this is a great little excavator it is a tiny larger than a Huina if you guys know what I'm talking about uh, but it is much smaller than the RC four-wheel drive 4200 XL the original 1.5 version that I have the orange one um, but this is a great little unit we had lots of fun building it uh, and I gotta say cost wise it costs more than the RC four-wheel drive uh, excavator but there is way more detail to it and uh, we have a good time with this but look at this the cat 374 FL for f large this is project Johnson aka the big one now you guys kind of get it uh, look at that it, it dwarfs the second one look at the two bucket sizes side by side Right, even if I brought this fella all the way up to the front, look it. That's what I'm talking about. Too bad about this little run. Hey, oh well. In the sun, everyone can see it until it's dirty and it doesn't matter. <laughs> My paint job was beautiful on this until the very first job, so then it was all scratched up. But look at this straight from the down. You can see quite a difference.
this, this one making a pervasive stance. Like this is in your way, you know it's in the room. You guys are gonna ask me how much does this uh, excavator weigh? I'm gonna tell you it weighs about 75 to 80 pounds, including all the oil, which isn't a lot, plus the battery, which isn't a lot, but just the carousel by itself and the undercarriage, holy cow, is heavy. And then you get into the back weight on the back weight, which you, on the back, I should say, the back weight on the back, which which you can add weight to if you want later on. There's a plate that goes to the inside and it's hollow. So you can actually, this is aluminum, but it does add quite a bit of weight anyway. But there you go guys, thank you so much for sticking with me through this build. Now that we've built two of these excavators for you, uh, do you feel a little bit more comfortable after seeing a, a build like this? Do you feel a little more confident about tackling something like this? Hopefully I've given you some good tips and tricks. You can leave me a comment in the comment section down below. Which one of these excavators is your favorite? I'm curious to know and we'll see you in the next episode of RC Adventures, my friends. Now get outside and play with RC. Or if you're like me, stay inside and build a huge one.